Finite A, extra practice questions for chapter two. All right, we're going to do this in pieces, a couple of parts. But first off, we are talking about power and how powerful someone is in a weighted voting system. There are two ways that we calculate power. Reminder, we have bands off and we have shapely Schubach. And generally, these give us the same answers, but they are analyzed very differently. Bands off, we are looking for critical players in winning coalitions. And with Shapely Schubach, we are looking for pivotal players in sequential coalitions. So critical players in winning coalitions and pivotal players in sequential coalitions. So let's talk about this first weighted voting system. Example one. Consider the weighted voting system, 6, 5, 3, 2, 1. So I know that my quota is always the first number in front of the colon, so that is 6. What is the quota? 6. What percent is the quota? So a percent is the part out of the whole, so I know that the quota is 6 out of the total. So what is the total? Well, I need to add up everybody's votes. 5, 3, 2, and 1. That gives me 11 total votes. And those 11 votes, if I take 6 divided by 11, I end up with 0.54 repeating. So what percent is the quota? We're going to say approximately 55%. How many players are there? So each number after the quota represents a player. So I see 1, 2, 3, 4. Is there a dictator? Remember, a dictator is someone whose weight is greater than or equal to the quota. So I would look at this. Do we have anybody whose weight is 6 or higher? No. Does anyone have veto power? Now, if you have veto power, it basically means that if you have veto power, then the sum of the weights of everybody else is less than the quota. Or in other words, they can't win without you. So if I take out player 1, the remaining players would have 3 plus 2 plus 1. They would have 6 votes. That's enough votes to meet the quota. So that means that player 1 does not have veto power. So if I take out player 1's votes, the other players still have enough votes to win. And if player 1 doesn't have veto power with 5 votes, then no one else is going to have veto power with less than 5 votes. So I'm just going to stop checking at that point in time. Is anyone a dummy? Well, if no one is a dictator, then no, and no one has veto power, then that means everybody in this situation is going to end up having some power in this. Next thing, find the bands off power distribution. So remember with bands off, we are looking for critical players in winning coalitions. So the first thing you want to do for bands off is you want to take all of the losing coalitions and you want to get rid of them. So here's all my possibilities, and I want groups that can't necessarily meet the quota. I'm going to get rid of those. Now, I know no one is a dictator, which means no one can win on their own. So I'm going to go ahead and cross off all of those coalitions. What about the groups of two? All right, so player one and two, they have eight votes combined. That's a winning coalition. One and three have seven votes. That's a winning coalition. One and four have six votes. That's a winning coalition. 2 and 3 have 5 votes. That's not enough votes to win. 2 and 4 have 4 votes. That's not enough votes to win. 3 and 4 have 3 votes. That's not enough votes to win. Now I know if 1 and 2 had enough votes, then 1, 2, 3 should be okay, and so should 1, 2, 4. And if 1 and 3 has enough votes, then 1, 3, 4 should also have enough votes. 2, 3, 4. 2, 3, and 4 add up to exactly 6. That's enough to meet the quota. And the grand coalition, um, those would all be always as a winner. Grand coalition is always a winner. Okay, so now I'm going to go through after I've crossed off my losing coalitions, and I'm going to circle my critical player. So remember, a critical player is like veto power. It means that if you take that person out of a winning coalition, it's no longer a winning coalition. So the thought process that we check for critical players is the same as the thought process we use for veto power. It's just more like small scale. 
So I know that no one can win on their own. So if there's a group of two, if either of the people drop out, they're not going to win, which means that player one and player two are both going to be critical. Same thing, if you can't win on your own, then if you have a two-person group, both people have to be there. Now what about the next one? If I take out player one, I've already marked off two, three as a losing group. So without player one, they lose. Player one has to be there. If I take out player two, I've already marked that one, three is a winning group. So they don't need player two. Without player two, they still have enough votes to meet the quota. They still have seven votes. So player two is not critical. And if player two is not critical to this coalition with three votes, then player three is not going to be critical with two votes. So I don't need to keep checking to the right once I found someone who is not critical. If I take out player one, two and four is a losing group. So player one has to be there. If I take out player two, one and four is a winner. And if one and four is a winner, then I don't need player two. So player two is not critical. If I take out player one, Three and four is a losing coalition, so I need to keep player one. If I take out player three, one and four, that's a winner. And if one and four is a winner, then I can, um, I don't need player three. If I don't need player three, then I don't need player four. Two, three, and four adds up to exactly six. Now, if that adds up to exactly six, that means if any of these people decide to drop out, it's going to drop underneath the quota, so everyone is going to be critical. You could go through the same process as we did before, though. You could cover up player two and say, without player two, can three and four win? No. Without player three, can two and four win? No. Without player four, can two and three win? No. If they can't win without you, you are critical. And finally, the grand coalition. If I cover up player one, 2, 3, and 4 is still a winning coalition, so they don't need player 1 to win. That means that player 1 is not critical. And if player 1 isn't critical with 5 votes, then 2, 3, and 4 aren't going to be critical either. The next step that you do for bands off is to count the number of circles you made, because that's going to be your denominator. So the denominator of each fraction is going to be the number of total critical players. So if you did circles or underline or whatever, you're just going to count them up. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. And everyone is going to get a fraction out of that 12. So player 1 will be something out of 12. Player 2 will be something out of 12. Player 3 will be something out of 12. And player 4 will be something out of 12. And your numerator is going to be the number of times that each person is actually um, critical. A little bit of a typo there, sorry. All right, so your numerator is going to equal the number of times that a person is circled individually. So player one was circled one, two, three, four, five, six out of the 12 times. And if he was circled six out of the 12 times, that means that he has 50% of the power in this weighted voting system. Player two was circled two out of the 12 times. Two out of the 12 would be one out of six, which is 16.6 .6 repeating percent of the time. Player three was circled two out of the 12 times. So that's also 16.6 .6 repeating percent. And player four looks like he was circled two out of the 12 times. So we can look at this weighted voting system and we can say, hey, player two, three, and four are equally powerful. And player one has 50% of the power, or he's three times as powerful as each of the other players. Notice that no one was a dummy. No one had 0% of the power. Okay. All right, next example. Example two, consider the weighted voting system, 12, 10, 4, 3, 1. What is the quota? Okay, quota is the first number in front of the parenthesis, that's tw or in front of the colon, that's 12. What percent is the quota? Again, that would be out of the total, so that's the quota divided by the total votes, so we would need to add those up. So 12 out of 10 plus 4 plus 3 plus 1, that would be 12 out of 18. So we have a 12 out of 18, which is a two-thirds quota. 
So you could write this as two-thirds, or you could say percentage-wise, that's approximately 67% if it's rounded, since that's 0.6 repeating. Okay. How many players are there? In this case, there are four players because there are four numbers besides the quota. Is there a dictator? In order to be a dictator, your weight has to be greater than or equal to the quota. The quota is 12. Nobody has at least 12 votes, so that's a no. Does anyone have veto power? Veto power means they can't win without you. It also means you're critical in the grand coalition, if you want to think about it that way. So the veto power person, let's check. If I take out player one, two, three, and four combined only have eight votes. That means that without player one, 2, 3, and 4 cannot win, so player 1 has veto power. Let's check player 2. If I take out player 2, then player 1, 3, and 4 have 14 votes. That's enough to meet the quota. So if player 2 does not have veto power with 4 votes, then player 3 won't have either, and player 4 won't have either. So player 1 has veto power. Without player one, they can't win. Is anyone a dummy? Well, since player one has veto power, let's check this. Player one has veto power, and he has 10 votes. He needs two votes to meet that quota of 12. So player two could help him get that two votes with four. Player three could help him get that two votes with three. But player four is not going to be helpful to this situation. Even if he convinces player four to say yes, he's still going to need somebody else to say yes as well because player four doesn't have enough votes to help him out. And if he convinces one of those other people to help him out, then he no longer needs player four because they have plenty enough to cover that two votes. So player four is a dummy. An easy way to think about this is since player one has veto power, he needs two votes. And he needs somebody who can help him get those two votes. If nobody can help him get those two votes, he's a dummy. All right. Find the Banzoff power distribution. Okay, Banzoff power distribution. We're going to start off by looking for winning coalitions. So I'm going to go through first, and I'm going to cross off all the coalitions that lose. So the quota is 12, and I know no one's a dictator, which means no one can win on their own. As far as groups of two go, one and two has 14. That's enough to win. 1 in 3 has 13. That's enough to win. 1 in 4 only have 11. That's a losing coalition. 2 in 3 only have 7. 2 and 4 only have 5. 3 and 4 only have 4. So the only two people groups that can win are 1 and 2 and 1 and 3. If 1 and 2 is a winning group, then so will 1, 2, 3. And so will 1, 2, 4. If 1 and 3 is a winning group, then 1, 3, 4 is also winning. 2, 3, 4. 2, 3, and 4 only have 8 votes. That's not enough to win. That's a losing coalition. And the grand coalition is always a winner. Now I'm going to go through and circle my critical players. Critical player is reasoned through just like veto power. I'm going to try to see, does this person have to be there for this to stay a winning coalition? So I know no one can win on their own, which means if you're in a group of two, you are a critical player in that group of two. What about the three player groups? If I take out player one, Player two and three, well, those guys can't win without him. I already marked that off as a losing group. If I take out player two, one and three is a winning group. If one three is a winning group, that means that um, player two is not critical. Player two is not critical, three won't be either. Next one. If I take out player one, I've already marked two four off as a losing group. If I take out player two, I've already marked one four off as a losing group. So player two is critical to that win as well. Another way to think about that is without player two, one four becomes a losing group. So I go from a winning coalition to a losing coalition. If I take out player four, one two is enough to win. One and two together have 14 votes. So they don't need player four to remain a winning coalition. If player four decides to drop out, no problem. That means player four is not critical. Next one. Player one. If I take out player one, three and four is a losing coalition. I need player one. If I take out player three, one four is a losing coalition. I need player three. If I take out player four, one and three is okay. We don't need player four. In the grand coalition, I have one. Take out player one, two, three, four is a losing group. If I take out player two, one, three, four is fine. And if player uh, two is not critical, then three and four won't, buy, won't be either. 
All right, so next I'm going to count my circles. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there are 10 circles here. That means everyone is going to get a fraction out of 10. Player 1 will be something out of 10. Player 2 will be something out of 10. Player 3 will be something out of 10. And player 4 will be something out of 10. I'm going to count. Player 1 was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So player 1 has 60% of the power. Player 2 was circled 1, 2 times out of 10. That's 20% of the power. Player 3 was circled 2 times. That's 20% of the power. And player 4 wasn't circled at all. He has 0% of the power. And he is a dummy. We already said that. So we were anticipating that that would be 0%. So with bands off, your basic steps to find the bands off power index, the bands off power distribution. You start by writing down winning coalitions. Or you can think about that if you've got them all written down. You can mark off the ones that are losing. Out of the winning coalitions, you check for critical players. A critical player is somebody who, if you take them out, causes the coalition to change from winning to losing. So they have to be there for that to stay winning. It's the same thought process you use for veto power. If you take them out and the coalition loses, you circle them, keep them. They're critical player. If you take them out and the coalition can win, they're not needed. You leave them alone. Once you've found somebody from left to right who isn't critical, you don't have to keep going to the right. Because if somebody's not critical with, for example, four votes, they won't be critical with three or with one. At the end, you count up how many times you made circles. That's your denominator. How many times each individual person was circled. That's the numerator. That gives us a percentage of power. This video will be continued.